greenhouse. Ever since we built our compost heater, we've been sitting in just complete rain and cold weather, windy, just crappy weather. We've not had a whole lot of sun, and that's kind of a foresight of what's coming in the winter. We have months of no sunlight. So here on day three, I wanted to come out and give some temps, some oversight, uh, check out the activity levels, and see what we're working with here on day three of this compost pile being active and heating up this greenhouse. Now, if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. We've had a lot of you subscribe lately, and we really appreciate it. This channel is what it is because of you guys, so huge thank you to you guys. Let's get into this. Simply just sliding the camera over here, we've got 66, almost 90% humidity, which is really high. High of 72 over the last two, three days and a low of 61. So it hasn't fallen below 61 degrees in our greenhouse at nighttime, the overnight temperatures, which is awesome. So that's telling us that our compost heater is keeping up and it's actively heating this greenhouse as much as we can into the night with our simple solar system. So we have a timer operating on our little air heating system so it kind of turns on and off. Now this simple timer here we have one down on the other side of our greenhouse to operate systems. And we're going to be hooking up this timer to our pond pump. We're gonna have a timer set up on our compost heating. We want to be able to get the most longevity out of those timers and out of these solar systems. So as we can hear the rain falling, I had shut my systems off so I could get a good pulse burst temperature. They were operating and I just want to see what we can get for a max temp on these. Jumping right outside here, protecting the camera. What are we sitting at? About 150. Now this is day three. Yesterday we were sitting about 135, and the day before we were at about 125. So with this massive pile, we should have plenty of longevity and heat energy to be able to transfer for many, many months through these systems here. We're gonna go ahead and click back on our fan here. So we've got it showing about 115 degrees coming out. I don't wanna hold that back too long. Man, there is some seriously hot air coming out of here. This is literally like a space heater. That is absolutely awesome. It is hot, steamy hot. 110, 115 degrees coming out of that bad boy. And that's just to show that all of the systems we put in place, man, that is warm. I can feel the heat rising all the way back here. Now let's go ahead, we're gonna shut this guy off. So I'm gonna go with 110 to 115 degrees. Now let's turn on our water system and see what kind of temps we can pull out of here. We've got a little while till the warm water starts to come out because this is all just passive 60 degree water that's been sitting in the greenhouse. Sitting at 66 degrees and it's starting to rise now. Seventy. 72, 73, 74, 6, 8. 79, 83, 84, 87, 88, 89, 90 degrees, 91, 94. This water's starting to get kind of hot on the hand. 97. 98, I hope everybody can see these temps. 98 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's basically where it leveled off at 97. You can see the steam coming off of it, the steam coming off my hand. Now that is pretty darn cool. So we're leveling off at right around 90 degrees, and every year this just amazes me. It is so cool to be able to heat water and heat air just like this. 
I wanted to just come out and show everybody what I'm experimenting with, what I'm observing, and my data collection for this. The heat building on day three here, we're seeing those temperatures raise. So we're sitting at 90 degrees for a run temperature. We'll state that we are still operating that 5.8 gallon per minute pump, the 350 gallon per hour pump as we swapped our pumps from our pond to our compost heating and vice versa in the last video. So I am still yet to achieve the flow rate that I want, so I'm not going to run my water as much as I run my air heating. The air heating is set and it's ready to go, ready to rock. We're blowing 100 plus degrees in here and that is more than we've been able to achieve on a constant flow. But being able to pull some serious heat from that compost pile and not even having our fine tuning done yet, I'm confident that we will have decent temperatures on day four or five. I'm going to test another pump or a smaller fitting and we're going to just kind of keep tweaking the system to get to the draw, the flow that we want and that we need for the system to be as efficient as possible. So this is our number one heat source in winter. We burn a wood stove once in a great while or whenever it's very, very cold and try and build up temps and stuff, but this is a constant, this is autonomous. And just being able to push a button, walk away and let these autonomous systems run to heat my greenhouse is very, very handy, especially in winter when you might not get out to the greenhouse every day, but every day these systems will be running for you. We're seeing great activity from our compost. We've got our ratios down and everything should operate through the winter. We should have a good extended long burn here. And I really didn't expect our pile to heat up so quickly. Normally it'll take two, three to five days before a pile that size builds that internal temperature. So we've been kind of sporadically running these systems over the last three days as it starts up, but I'm seeing a lot of great potential from this pile out here. And like I said, it's been raining and cloudy, so it didn't have a chance to dry out. It's just been absorbing more water. And once we get to the point where I feel like it's saturated fully, we can cover it with a tarp, an insulated tarp blanket, just to hold that heat on the top to allow it to do its natural cycle and burn up. So if anybody has any questions, drop those in the comments below. This was just a quick day three update. As I get off work, I wanted to come out and check the systems. I shut them off for maybe five minutes before we started them up because I wanted to see what kind of temperatures we could bring as opposed to what temperatures were flowing. The air is constant. The water has a good spike and then it levels out. So we're going to fix that up with our flow rate and just messing around with fittings and pumps here. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, checking out, subscribing, liking, sharing, all of those things. We really appreciate you guys checking out our channel and finding interest in this. And we're gonna continue to bring videos just like this and lots of other winter heating experiments for a greenhouse and just general self-sufficiency ideas, tips, and tricks. So with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one.